Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play 3DO games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention before we get too far in today's video, you're already needing to go to have both RetroArch and Dev Mode already installed on your Xbox. And I will mention if you've been following my previous videos, for this video we're going to be using the latest version of RetroArch 1.9.4. However, if you've never installed either Dev Mode or RetroArch before on your Xbox, I'll also be leaving a card on screen to show you how to install the latest version as well. So first you'll have to watch either of those, then you can come back here, we can continue and I'll be showing you specifically how to play 3DO games. So for RetroArch and 3DO, we're going to be needing a few things. One, we are going to be needing a BIOS file for this, and the second, we're going to be needing game files. So for today's video, I'm going to be using an external drive for both of these, and I'm going to be talking about the BIOS file first. So with 3DO, we are going to need a BIOS file, and it needs to be exactly like this. I will mention in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you where to download a BIOS file. You can feel free to create a dump or backup, or of course, find it somewhere online and download it like that. But once you get it, it will need to be named exactly like this. P-A-N-A-F-Z 10.bin and it needs to be named exactly like this for it to work inside RetroArch. So the first thing you'll need is your BIOS file. The second thing we're going to be talking about is games. So I currently have one game right here and again I'm not going to be showing you how to download games or sharing any download links. You'll either need to download and find these yourself or create a dump or backup for your existing games. Shouldn't take too much work to do although I also will be showing you that in today's video but you can feel free to do a quick google search. It shouldn't be too difficult to do since it's on a disk. However if you're like me and you've downloaded your games they will most likely come in a .zip file. Now, thankfully, we can play games directly from a .zip in RetroArch. However, for me, I always like to extract my games. So in today's video, I'm also going to be extracting them. And if you are extracting them, there is also a small possibility that instead of a .zip file, it will come in a .7-zip or a .rar format. If this is the case, you will need an extra software, either WinRAR or 7-zip. I'll be leaving both of these linked in the description down below. For an example, how you would do it with 7-zip, if it comes in either of those file formats, we simply right-click, we hover over 7-zip, and we simply click Extract File or we can click extract here to extract in the same location. I'm going to be extracting here and my file is going to be extracting out. Now when you extract your games there is a couple of possible formats. There is a .iso file or it's possible to come in a .bin and a .q file or even multiple .bins and .q files. For a .iso format we can actually run these games directly from an external drive without any issues. However if your game comes in multiple .bins or .q files you will need to transfer them to the internal storage on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If this is the case, there's a couple of ways of doing this. One of the ways is by transferring it to your external drive and then transferring it over to your dev mode a little bit later. That shouldn't be any issue, but you may need to increase the usable storage on your Xbox. This is something I showed during my RetroArch install video. However, I'll also be leaving a separate card on screen to show you specifically how to increase the file storage on your Xbox Series S. And for bigger games, it's also nice to have it directly on your Xbox. From this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our BIOS file and our game files. We're going to be putting in our external drive. We're going to be connecting it to our Xbox and we're going to be continuing from there. The next thing we're going to be doing is installing a file browser on our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. This is so we can easily transfer our BIOS files into our RetroArch folder. And that's the next thing I'm going to be showing you. From this point, we're going to need to load up our Xbox Series X and we're going to need to know the IP address for the remote access on the bottom right. This is what we had to use to install RetroArch previously, but we're going to need to locate back to this website again to bring over some extra files that we're going to need to play PlayStation 1 games. From this point, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be locating to the URL that we had set previously from our Xbox. I have just logged in and I'm right here right now. So for us to bring our BIOS file to RetroArch, it is technically possible to do it from the web portal. However, I've always had a lot of issues with that, so I would recommend doing it through a file browser instead. So what we're going to be doing is installing a file browser on our Xbox through the web portal so we can actually transfer our BIOS files via the USB over to our Xbox directly. So what we're going to be doing to do this is come to this link. As always, links is in the description down below. And what we're going to be doing is downloading a file explorer application that we're going to be installing on our Xbox dev portal. So come to this link, simply click download, and then your download will begin. Once your download is done, we're going to be coming back to our Xbox dev portal. We're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps on the home section right here. We're then going to be selecting the add button here and we're going to be choosing our my explorer file.appx that we just downloaded previously. Click open, select your file, select next, then select start and then your file will start to install. 
Now this can take a couple of seconds before it fully installs and opens up on your Xbox. And just like that, the file should be installed. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. From this point, we're going to be coming down and we're going to be launching the My Files Explorer application. Once we're here, we're going to be locating to our external drive, which for me is right here, removable storage devices. We're going to be selecting whatever drive we have our contents on. So for me, it's here. It's in my Xbox folder. It's in my BIOS folder. And here I have my BIOS file, the panfc 10bin What I need to do is come here, select this. I need to press the start button. I need to click copy file. And then I need to bring this to my RetroArch folder. To do this, we can come here to the My Library on the left. We can select isolated storage. When we select this, we may be brought to the blank screen. And that's because we're currently inside the My Files Explorer folder. We can come out of this easily by coming to the URL bar here at the top. We're going to be selecting packages and now we're going to be looking for the first folder here 1e4c this is going to be our retroarch folder we need to hover over this click a again from this point we're going to be inside the retroarch folder what we're going to be looking for at this point is the local state folder here we're going to be clicking a once we're here we're going to be scrolling down you can use your right thumbstick and we're going to be coming to our system folder right here and here's where we can put all of our bios files and system files for our retroarch so what I'm going to be doing from this point is clicking the start button. I'm simply going to be pasting and I'm going to be putting my BIOS file here. Once this is here, we can simply open up RetroArch. Once RetroArch is open, we're going to be brought to our main menu right here. What we're going to be doing is coming here to the right. We're going to be clicking load core and we're going to be searching for our 3DO. This should be at the very bottom. It should be the 3DO company dash 3DO and then in brackets 4DO. What we're going to be doing is clicking the A button to select this. From this point, we're going to be clicking down one. We're going to be looking for the load content option. And here we're going to have to locate to where our games are. Now, if you're like me and your games are on your external drive, what you're going to have to do is come down here and they'll most likely be on your E drive. Otherwise, you can locate to them anywhere else. From this point, simply locate to your games. As you can see, I currently have my game here in a .iso format. As mentioned, we can play this directly from an external drive without having to transfer to our internal drive. Simply click A here again to load this. Again, if you have multiple cores that can read a .iso format, they may show up here. But since we have our current core selected, the 4DO core, it'll show up here at the very top. Simply click A again. Then your screen will go black for a couple of seconds while everything is transferred over. So you may just have to wait here until everything boots up. And just like that, you'll be playing 3DO games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series S. X. From this point, if you'd like to open up your menu, you can press your menu combination now. For me, mine is down and select. And just like that, you can see here all of your normal RetroArch settings. However, what we can do is come here to our options tab. We can click the A button and here we can get some core specific options for RetroArch. So the first thing we can do here is select the BIOS. So if you have multiple BIOS files, you can select them here. For this case, I only have one. So I'm just going to be leaving that alone. We don't need to worry about that. The next thing you can also take a look at is the CPU overclock. By default, this is set to 1x. However, turning this up can speed up games. Games, so it is something to keep in mind for some games you might want to experiment with this but overall I'd recommend leaving this alone at 1x you don't have to worry too much about this however if you are having some issues you can feel free to come in here and take a look at this you can feel free to change the mode by default it's set to NTSC but you can also set it to PAL 1 or PAL 2 the NVRAM storage I'd recommend leaving per game so you can do it here directly otherwise you can set up shared although if you set up shared this can cause some issues and some crashing so again I wouldn't really recommend experimenting with this too much another thing you can also take a look at is higher res shell rendering this is something that can make a big difference to your games and make them look a lot better this is something i'd recommend experimenting with it'll basically render your games at 2x the resolution and make things look a lot better as mentioned here on the information it will be much more impactful for 3d models and will have little to no effect if any on 2d models so it's something to keep in mind however it's definitely something i'd recommend keeping on for 3d games it can make a big difference and one extra thing you might want to take a look at depending on how many people are playing is active input devices as you can see right here it's currently set to one however if you're playing with multiple people you can feel free to come in here and change this but otherwise i'd recommend leaving it at one and then there's a couple of timing specific hacks for some specific games you can see crash and park here dino park tycoon and a couple of others here below so if you're playing any of these specific games i'd recommend turning these on other than that the rest of the settings you can leave by default and this core works really well overall the last thing I'd recommend doing is creating a game playlist. You can see I have one on screen right now for Super Nintendo. It basically concatenates all of your game into its own section like this. And especially when you're using a lot of different cores and consoles, this looks really great. And it's definitely something I'd recommend doing. I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step by step how to do that. It works really, really well. And it's definitely something I'd recommend doing. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play 3DO games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel, 
I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.